Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceBank TV. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the latest update to Slider Revolution 5.4 and the latest add-on that's been added into that and that's the before and after slider add-on. Now you need to be a commercial purchaser of this so if it's been shipped with a copy of a theme that you purchased you don't have the license key so you won't have access to this. It's only for people that have purchased a license specifically for Slider Revolution. If you haven't got that, even if you've had this bundled with a theme, I still recommend getting it because it gives you access to a whole ton of extra add-ons and features and tools that you don't get as part of that free inclusion with the theme. If you do consider purchasing this so you've got the full version of it, please consider using the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link and we get a little bit of a kickback for selling it via that link. So it just helps support the channel and all the things we try to do on here to give you more content. Anyway, enough talking. Let's crack on with taking a look at this add-on, installing it, configuring it, and creating our first slider using this great new feature. So to show you exactly what you get with this new add-on, I've got the demo open in front of me. This is part of the Slider Revolution update, and it's going to show us an example of how this particular function works. You can see we've got a slider split into two different sections, and we've got these arrows in the middle. And what we can do is we can simply drag it over to the left or the right to show a before and after version of the slide. So this is great if you've got a photography or a tutorial-based website, or you just want to show some different sort of features like this, where you've got night on the left-hand side, day on the right hand side both running two completely different sliders one of the other benefits you get with this is the fact that you can still create fully functional slides and you can use each one of those independently and have them sort of transition between the two so you still got the benefit of animation and rollover effects and all those great things you used to use in with slider revolution 5 so let's go to the back end let's take a look at how we can use this we'll install it and go through the entire process of creating our first animated slider with the before and after function Okay, so once you've got your fully licensed version of Slider Revolution 5.4 installed, all you need to do is come over into your admin section, and where we've got Slider Revolution in the left-hand menu, you'll see you've got the option for add-ons. You click on that, comes through to this section, making sure that you click on the check for new add-ons if you don't see the latest before and after add-on included in there, just to make sure that you're not getting a cached version of the website. So you can see if we scroll down to the bottom, we've got before and after. It's not installed currently, it's at version 1 at the time of recording this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this add-on. Let it go through, it'll download that now, go through the process of setting it up, and allow us to go and configure any options that may be applicable to this new add-on. Once we've done that, we can start working with it. So you can see we've now got check for updates. It's not active currently, so let's just say we want to activate it. And we can see that we've got the, the latest version, which is 1.00. So once that's activated, we can then start working. And there we go, activated. You can see we've got another button there, which is how to, and if we click on that, we've got the typical kind of help that we have with the add-ons in Slider Revolution 5.4. So this will give you an overview of how you can use this particular add-on when you're working with creating a slider with it. So you can see, scroll through, we've got all the different options available, show us exactly how to use it. So let's go through and let's take a look at how we do this. So I've gone ahead and created a blank slider, so we're in the slider settings section of Slider Revolution 5.4. And uh, we've got all the normal options, but if we take a look on the right-hand side, at the bottom you can see we now have before and after. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that's enabled. So even though we've activated the plugin, we still need to activate it for this particular slider. So let's just say yes, let's enable that, and you can see that now opens up a whole ton of extra options. We've got different things like arrows, drag container, divider line, defaults, and miscellaneous. So if we take a quick look over this, we can see some of these settings, and we'll jump back into this in a moment once we've created our first initial slider, and we can see how those different settings take effect. But you can see we've got the option for horizontal or vertical arrows. We can click on there, we can choose from any of the options that are available, so we can customize and tweak this to our heart's content. We can specify the icon size we want to work with, we can specify any icon spacing, colors, and whether we want to include shadows in there. If we jump over to the drag container, you can see we've got the option for padding, border radius, background colors, and so on. Then the divider line, we've got some ranges of options in there, so we can specify how wide the division line is between our two different sliders. We've also got the defaults, which is all the default settings for when we're working with a before and after slider. And finally, we've got the miscellaneous option. Now, I'm not going to cover all of these different options. I'm going to cover some of the basics. And what I'd suggest is once you've set up your first uh, before and after slider, come back in, try some of these settings, see what they do, see where you get the effect that you like out of your particular slider.
But let's just leave that as is at the moment. We'll leave it all the default settings. We'll come through and we'll just go through then and we'll create our new standard slider. We'll give it a name and we'll call this B and A. And we'll do the same for the alias. So we go before and after. So we'll leave that. That's the basics of it. We'll come down and we'll say, I'll just leave it as it is. I'm not really bothered at the moment. We're not dealing with anything specific. Let's save those settings. That jumps us into the slider settings and we can go in there, obviously the slider area, and we can now go in and start configuring the different options that we want. So let's go and create our first slide. Now then, before we create any slides, we need to go in and specify that we want this to be uh, using the before and after. So we need to enable it at this point as well. If we come down to add-ons, you can see that we've got the option in there and we've got before and after. So let's select that to make it active and we can see we can disable it or enable it. So we'll just say we want that to be on. You can see now we have some options in there for the reveal direction, the delays and so on. The different kinds of transitions, teasers and different things along those lines. So we've done the first part of that now. Now we can go and start to put some before and after slide images in there. So what we need to do, as we always would, is jump back to the main background section. You now see we've got some different options at the top. We've got source before and source after, and then filters. So some of the things that you're normally used to seeing in this point, such as the Ken Burns effect and so on, that's not in there because this is a specific type of slider that's using that add-on to create the effect. So all we want to do, first of all, is set the source image for before. So we'll click on there. We can use the media library if we want to. So now we can go and build up our slider. So let's click on there and we'll just choose a couple of images. So let's just say we'll go with this one to start off with. That's a pretty good. We'll say insert that one. Then we'll just jump over to the source after and we'll specify on there the after image. So I'm looking for two images that are the same kind of resolution. That'll do for this example. We say insert. You see now that once we've set that main background image, we now have some of those additional effects back. So we've also got source before, source after and source settings for before and after quite difficult to say. So if we click on there, you can see we've got some different options on how we want the image to be displayed, the position of it, the background fit, and so on. All the things you're kind of used to when you're dealing with images as a normal background in Slider Revolution. So let's just save it at this point, and we've got some basic things set up in there. So we just hit save now. So we save our slider as is, so we know we've got everything saved at this point. Now before we move on, let's just take a preview and we can see what we have at our initial stages just by setting those basic parameters up. So let's just click to preview it. And you'll see now that will animate in and show us we now have our before and our after images. And we can scroll this over to the left or the right to reveal whichever image we want. If we want to check it out on different size screens, we can do that very easily on different devices. So you can see all very quick and simple. So we now have the basics all set up. We know everything is working as we wanted to. So at its most basic level, we've now created that before and after slider. We have no animations on there other than the animation of the slide before and after effect showing you so you can see exactly what's going to happen. But we have nothing else on there. Each one of those slides is kind of just a picture. Now, you may not want that. You may want to put some text on there. You may want some animated images and so on. Well, because this slide now is just one slide and we've got a before and after, we've got to go through. We've got to work in a slightly, slightly different way to what we're used to. So if we scroll down now to the second block where we normally deal with our animation and add extra layers and things along those lines, you can see we've got the add-ons option there as well. So if we click and enable that, you can see we've got select the add-on of before and after. Currently it's ghosted out, so we can't do anything with it. So let's create a layer first of all. And if we take a look, we're currently working on the first layer. So if we scroll back up, you can see this is the left-hand layer. This is our before image. So anything we put on this is going to be displayed on the before section or the before slide. So let's click and add a layer. And we'll just say, for this example, we'll just use a text layer. And we'll say before. And we'll just set that to be OK on there. And we'll just style that up quickly so we'll get a nice big bit of text on there. So I'm not worrying too much about what this is going to look like. It's more a case just to show you what's going on. And we'll position that in the center. And we'll just hit Save just so we can take a look at what's going to happen. So if we refresh this now, we come back up, we hit the preview, we can take a look. There's our before, and you can see as we scroll over it, that's only evident on that slide. So as you'd expect it to be, because we're kind of overlapping the before and the after. Excuse that. So if we come down, 
How do we get to the second slide? So we want to put the second piece of information on there. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Now if we go back to the add-ons, we see we can now select the before and after. So we can click on that. That opens up some additional options. We now got global settings and we've got layer settings. Now, now, let's concentrate on this example for the layer settings. You can see we've got the option for before and after. So we just make sure we've got the layer that we want targeted. And then we can specify, do we want that to be a before layer or an after layer? So if I just change that over to after and we'll hit save. Let's just jump up now to the preview option and we'll find that because we've set that to be after, it now shows up in the second after image. So before is no longer part of the first image or the before image, it's now part of the after image. So pretty cool and pretty easy. Now, let's just close that down. How do you now differentiate between those layers? How do you see what's going to be part of the before and what's going to be part of the after? Well, they've thought of that too. If we take a look at the editing area, you can see on this dark gray strip, we've got three little circular icons. Now these icons allow us to do simple things. The first one is to show us the before layers. The green shows us the after layers and the yellow shows us all the layers. So if we want to switch between the layers that are active on the before or after, we can do that very easily, or we can show all the layers regardless of which part of the slide the before or after they actually displayed on. So let's take a look. If we do the before, that now disappears because it's part of the after slide. If we click on after, you can see that now displays. And finally, if we click on show all, that obviously shows all the different options. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy to deal with. So we can quickly and easily create these great looking before and after sliders. Great if you're a photographer or you're an image editor or something where you want to show exactly what something looked like in its previous state to how it's done when you've made alterations to it. I'm sure you can find a million other reasons to be using something like this. But I think it's one of those really cool add-ons. It's something that's really becoming quite powerful and quite used on a lot of websites now, especially things to do with photography. I know I use it on my Lightroom website. Anyway, that's all there is to the basics of it. If we want to jump back and take a look at some of the other options, we can do that now and we can see how they influence and affect the slide itself. So let's go and take a look at those options now. Let's just quickly save this back up. So we now know we've got everything saved out. Let's just jump back over to the slider settings panel and take a look at making some alterations to those different elements. So let's just jump back in and we'll come down to the before and after. And let's take a look at what we've got available on there. We've seen the arrows. So let's go and change those to start off with. We've got horizontal arrows in this example. So let's click on those and let's change those to these, these double headed arrows. And let's make them slightly larger. Let's make them 50 pixels. And we'll make them, we'll put a shadow on there as well. And we'll leave everything else as it is. And we'll come to the divider line and we'll say we want the divider line to be five pixels. We'll make sure that that's white. And we'll leave any line shadow off there. So let's just hit save. We'll just jump back into the slider and take a look at that in the preview mode. And let's take a look at the difference we've got on there. So let's let that load in. And as you can see, now we've got those different arrows, even though it's only on the one side because I only changed the left arrows. I didn't change the right arrows. And you can see the line itself is now considerably thicker. We've also got that shadow effect being used with those arrows. So it's very quick and easy, and you can see they're pretty self-explanatory for the most part. So I'd recommend going in, making some adjustments, seeing exactly what they do, get it exactly styled the way you want, and then you've got a really easy to work with before and after slider effect using Slider Revolution 5.4. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you an insight into how you can start integrating this new add-on into your specific website. Like I said at the top of the video, if you don't have the full commercial version, I'd highly recommend grabbing that. If you use the link in the description below, that helps us out. But the add-ons themselves and all the extra features you get are worth the asking price alone just to give you so much more over the free bundled with your theme version. Anyway, if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.